بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وذا فضل الله تعالى in the grace of the mercy of Allah we have completed the sixth juz of the Quran in a bulk of the of surah al-Ma'idah Allah Ta'ala says regarding the Bani Israel, there is much discussion in, in Surah Al-Ma'idah regarding Bani Israel. And uh, the entire Quran is filled with the discussion of Bani Israel because we come from the same place. We share the same faith. The basis, the foundation is all the same. Principles are the same. The difference is in the Sharia. The difference is in the Sharia. Certain micro laws and regulations the format of their prayer, the format of their fast, etc. But the foundation is all the same, hence the discussion regarding Bani Israel, because it's one Sharia from the next to the next Sharia to the next Sharia, and the Sharia of Muhammad وسلم, is the final and abrogating Sharia for all the Sharias and the Umm that came before. Hence the, the extensive discussion of Bani Israel in the, in the Roman Quran, in the لمن كان له قلب أو ألقى السمع وهو شهيد لعبرة لأولي الألباب لأولي الأبصار Continuously Allah Ta'ala says in all of these verses there is lesson to be drawn for people of intellect and understanding and reason and knowledge so that you don't make the same mistake and some areas of, of goodness following those paths So Rasulullah Sallallahu said لتتبعون السنن من كان قبلكم You will most certainly follow the ways of the people of the past, i.e. Bani Israel, to be more specific, Isa Salam was asked, Yahud and Nasara, he said precisely, for the reasons we mentioned above. So Nabi, Nabi Salam does not want us to follow in their bad footsteps. But he said, human nature is such that even if somebody is doing something wrong and you know it, you still follow it. So you will most certainly follow in those paths to the one handspan for a handspan. He gave such a vivid description of uh, to what extent we will go in following them. That if they enter the hole of an iguana or lizard, you will follow that and go inside as well. Subhanallah. In the foolishness of man, like monkey see, monkey do. The sheep mentality, the herd mentality. This ummah is an ummah of a'imah, imama. This ummah is the ummah of imama, leadership. We should not be led, but we should be leaders. We are the lead, we are, Allah Ta'ala says, لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ That you may be leaders and you may be witnesses upon mankind. What does this mean? We will stand witness for the Anbiya alayhimu salatu wa taslimat on the day of Qiyamah. When the Nabi will come to, the, to Allah Ta'ala, every, every Nabi. And Allah will ask him, have you, have you propagated the message to your people? And he will say, yes indeed Allah. Then the people will be brought forward and they will be asked, did you uh, they, did your prophet uh, uh, share the message with you? They will deny, they will reject. So then Allah will ask the prophet, where is your delil? Where is your proof? Where is your witness? Because your own people are denying and rejecting. So the Nabi, every Nabi will say, the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So then the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will be brought forward and say, this Nabi is claiming that he has passed the message to his people and his people are denying. Do you stand witness? They said, yes, indeed, we stand witness that this Nabi, we were not even present at the time. On what basis have you, are you standing witness? You are standing, we are standing witness, Allah, because you have told us through the, uh, through the, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and everything we, he said, we believe it. So we will be the witness for that respective, for the respective Anbiya upon their people. But yet we... Because we have a lost heritage and lost the direction and lost identity. So we are looking for guidance by the people of the past. And this is precisely what Allah Ta'ala forbade us from doing. Is the time not come for people of Iman that you should not be like those who came before you. And you should, your heart should tremble in fear in front of Allah Ta'ala and the verses of the Qur'an. Because you are in the position of Imam. 
So Allah Ta'ala says regarding the Bani Israel, لُعِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ عَلَى لِسَانِ دَاوُدَ وَعِيسَ بْنِ مَرْيَمْ ذَلِكَ بِمَا عَصَوْا وَكَانُوا يَعْتَدُونَ Bani Israel were cursed on the, on the tongues of Dawood and Isa alayhi salatu wassalam. That is because they transgressed and they were disobedient and they transgressed with the laws and dilemmas of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah ta'ala goes further into detail what is meant. كَانُوا لَا يَتَنَاهَوْنَ عَنْ مُنْكَرٍ فَعَلُوهُ كَانُوا لَا يَتَنَاهَوْنَ عَنْ مُنْكَرٍ فَعَلُوهُ the Bani, Israel, the Bani Israel failed in a very important area of the deen. And that is to mutually remind one another of goodness and to forbid one another from evil and wrong and vice. If somebody did something wrong, the next person will say, no, you know what? He's feeling shy to tell the person he's doing something wrong. He's, you feel, we feel shy. We feel shy and uh, ashamed and embarrassed to alert somebody at their wrong in their deen. We feel shy and embarrassed to prevent somebody from something that is haram and wrong, to give a good reminder. That let that same person touch your dunya, do something to you that affects your dunya. Then you, there's no shyness and no embarrassment. Then you will immediately... Bring out the cameras. Can't you see where you're driving? Don't you have your license? Can't? Then suddenly we have no shyness and no embarrassment. Where's the cameras? Please bring out the CCTV. Take him to court. Do this, do that. Sahaba radiallahu anhum. They were, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were without example in terms of how they were so uh, diligent on this matter. If somebody did something wrong, they went to the point of excommunicating that person. A Sahabi once, his nephew was busy with some stones. You know children how they are. They pick up stones and they throw it at each other for nothing. Okay, for nothing. We've got a small staircase here in front. There's some beautiful stones. Every time you go out there, the stones are all scattered. Because the children are kicking it and they're throwing it. So he said to his nephew, brother, don't do this. He said, don't do that. I remember when you were very young. Much, much young, very small. He was still in like year one, year two age. And my uncle brought us and he dropped us off at home. And myself and my cousin were throwing at each other stones. And in the process, I broke my uncle's car window. My father got very upset at me. I remember it to this day. Why? And Nabi Sassam said this. He said to his nephew, listen, don't do that. Because you are not going to harm any enemy of yours. The only difference is you're going to hurt somebody's eye. Or you're going to damage somebody's tooth. If you throw that stone and it hits somebody's eye, you might make the person blind. You'll damage the person's eye or you'll break his tooth. So don't do that. You're not going to, if you're throwing a stone at your enemy, it's not going to help you. If you're, not, if you're just throwing stones about. Obviously, don't use this here in the against what's going on in Gaza and Palestine. You know, they said, oh, the Sheikh said that Palestinians mustn't throw stones. I'm not saying that. They don't have any weapons to throw, but they have to throw the stones. That will fall under the category of, you know, like Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Nabi Sallallahu was asked by Allah Ta'ala to throw the, the sand, you know, into the eyes. So this is their sand, this is their bullets. Don't worry, let them throw more. <clears throat> and we must make dua for those stones, they must become like bullets. So this is normal playing, you know. So this nephew of, he, of his, he continued to do that. He continued to pick up stones and throw. He got so upset with his nephew, he said, listen brother, I am telling you the Prophet forbade us from doing that for this reason and you continue to do this? By Allah, I'm not talking to you for the rest of your days. They went to that extent. What hurt them in their dunya meant nothing. You usurp their dunya meant nothing. But if you violated the command of Allah in front of them, they wouldn't sit quiet except that they would prevent that. Precisely opposite of what the Bani Israel did. The Bani Israel did not do that. Hence the punishment of Allah Ta'ala came upon them. You know the story of the Sabbath. There were three categories of people. There were those who were actively in violation of the Sabbath. 
there were those who, who forbade and there were those who kept quiet and said, you know what, we're too embarrassed, we're too shy, we can't do anything, we can't say nothing, never mind, leave them. It's my cousin, it's my uncle, what can I do? Just be quiet. Lakum dinukum waliyadin. For you is your deen, for me is my deen. You know what, it's a democratic world, freedom of speech, freedom of expression. No, brother, it doesn't work like that. In the laws of Allah Ta'ala, there's no freedom of expression like that, freedom of action. You do what Allah wants you to do. And it is your duty to give guidance and to stop from the wrong. Nabi A.S. said, Man ra'a minkum munkaran, fal yughayyirhu biyadih. Who sees a wrong being perpetrated, then use your hand, physically put an end to it. If you do not have the physical might or the jurisdiction, then use your, your tongue, stop the person. Brother, that's wrong, that's haram. The, you do this here, this is grave sin against that. You know, don't be shy. The brother is next to you in salah, he might be doing something wrong. Use hikmah. Don't embarrass the person, of course. See, the person is wearing, nowadays I've been seeing so many people coming with multiple rings. Brother, you're only allowed to wear one ring up to 4.38 grams. It must be pure silver and no other metal allowed. MashaAllah, khalas. Zakallah, Shaykh. Just rub the guy's shoulder, rub his uh, knee a bit, feel nice. You've done your Islamic duty of reminding. Maybe the person didn't even know. Some of our brothers are wearing this, you know, high gloss red color clothing and jubbas and abaz. This is again, the Rasulullah said, red is for the women, not for the men. So you politely remind the brother, well, this, this red is not monastic. This also didn't like it for the men. Oh, sorry, Shaykh, I didn't know. People many times, they don't even know. So you've done your Islamic duty. You didn't embarrass the person. You didn't make him feel low. At the same time, you, you, he will also be reminded. Sahaba did this all the time. But he, Israel failed to do that. What did Nabi Aisha Sam say? The first nuqsan and deficiency and downfall of the Bani Israel was when they would visit their friends and the guy was doing something wrong, the first time he forbade him. From the second time onwards, he said nothing. From the third time onwards, he joined him. So then their own anbiya then cursed them. And then when, then upon that came the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nabi alayhi salatu wa said, You will most certainly لَتَأْمُرُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَلَتَنْهَوُنَّ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ You must and most certainly do that. For enjoin good and forbid from evil. And if you fail to do that, Allah Ta'ala is going to bash your hearts with one another. You will see disunity. You will see in our fighting. You will see bickering. You will, be you will fight on petty issues. Now your fight is what? About the dunya. About the position. About the uhda. About a small possession. It's not about the deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. When Sahaba, when the Sahabi Kaab ibn Malik anhu and his other two friends did not participate in the battle of Tabuk, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, these brothers need to be excommunicated. Until when? We'll see. So for 40 days, no salam, no kalam. The Sahaba were not allowed to make salam to them. They were not even allowed to greet them. And they, they were diligent on that. When the 40 days expired, then it was extended to another 10. Now even their wives, they can't come close to their wives. But when the exoneration came from the heavens, then every Sahabi ran to them and embraced them. Mubarak, congratulations, Tuba, Bishara, on the forgiveness of Allah. It was, it, it was as if nothing happened before. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi gave a beautiful description of mankind. Mankind is like two tabaqat or two floors and decks of the ship. We are all sailing. And where are we sailing? We are sailing towards Jannah. We are sailing towards Jannah. There's only two floors on the ship. It's one floor on the top and one is the second, uh, the, the above uh, deck and the below deck. Every time the people from the bottom needed water, they would always have to come on the top to access the water. But after some time, the people at the bottom started becoming tired. So they said, why don't we just drill a hole and we can access the water directly. If the people on the top do not stop them, they will sink at the bottom and the entire ship and everyone will sink with. Because when the punishment of Allah comes, remember like we said yesterday, it leaves nobody, it spares no one. The good and the bad. The good and the bad. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when, when Allah Ta'ala will, when the Malaika will come, and, uh, then a Malaika will say to Allah, Allah, there was so and so person in the city, you destroyed the city, but there was such a pious man, 
He was daily in the masjid, five salahs, 20 rakats of salah, taraweeh, and he was standing pillar like a pillar, and he was making dua, and mashallah, X, Y, Z. So he said to the malaika, that the same brother, in, when, my, when my laws were being violated, lam yatama'ar qattu. His colors on his face didn't change. He didn't feel anything. So the Western society numbs us. The Western society gives us a, this a, an aesthetic. And become, we become numb. And we, it becomes normalized. And then we, when somebody does something wrong, you know what? You know, I'd rather be quiet. It's him and he's going to deal with himself. You know? You can't, you can't let the your brother is going into Jahannam. And you want to let him go into Jahannam? So Rasulullah said, Kullu kalam ibn Adam alayhi la lahu. Every statement of Ibn Adam will be held against him in the court of Allah. You know, like the policemen when they cuff you, everything you, day, you say or do will be held against you in the court of law. You have the right to remain silent. Because if you say something, it's being recorded. So the, the angels are, are recording. Every statement that comes from insan will be held against him in Allah's court of law. Same ones. Kullu kalam ibn Adam alayhi la lahu. Not in your favor. Except three genres. Number one is illa amrun bil ma'roof aw nahyun anil munkar. Anything that falls under the category or the genre of amr bil ma'roof for uh, enjoining of goodness. Teaching, educating, salah, something on that lines. Aw nahyun anil munkar or forbidding from evil. So we said the Bani Israel who were violating the Sabbath were three categories. Those who were active in the violation, those who were passive, and those who were actively forbidding. When the punishment came, only people who were saved were the ones who were actively forbidding. Those who were involved and those who were passive were both, in, were both included in the punishment and they were destroyed. And the others were only safe because they built a wall between the two societies. They went to that extent. We are not going to be part of your violation of the Sabbath. They erected a wall in between. Hence, they were saved from the punishment. Hence, they were saved from the punishment. The concept of cuckoldness or the youth is set into the entire ummah. And that is, what is that concept? When the laws of Allah are being violated, your, your eyes don't, and your, your face doesn't change its colors. Nothing happens inside your heart. So Isa Asam said that if you don't have the, phys the physical and the verbal jurisdiction and might to do it, then you should feel it in your heart. You should cry about it. Allah, this man is doing this wrong. I don't have the, the strength to approach him, to say something, to do something. I can't stop it. But at least you're feeling the badness in your heart. iman. This is the weakest format of iman. And in one reverse, if you don't have that as well, then there's no, there's, there isn't even the rai ke dane ke barabar. There isn't uh, uh, the extent of a master seed of iman in your heart left. So the first category that will be safe is Amr bil Ma'roof. The second category that will be safe, Nahi anil Munkar. And the third category that will be safe, Dhikrullah. Measure everything you do and say under these three categories. Does it fit within, within the umbrella of one of these three? If it doesn't, then we have cause of concern. Allah, maybe the statement may be used against me in Allah's court. There was one, one woman in the annals of history, although the ulama discussed whether it's, we should do that or not, she was known as the woman who only spoke the Quran. Abdullah ibn Mubarak, rahimahullah, he was uh, returning from Hajj, and uh, he, he stumbled upon this woman. She was alone. So he asked her, sister, you alone, where are you going? What's going on? And she replied in the Quranic verse, then he asked her, okay, where are you going? She replied again in Quran, it's a lengthy discussion, beautiful. I don't recall the exact verses. How many sons you have, what their names, and everything she's giving Quranic answer. Until they reach the qafila and the caravan. And then he meets the sons, they offer him something to eat. He said, listen, I'm not taking your food. Until you tell me what's going on with your mother. Every time I ask her questions, she answers Quranic verse. She says, our mother for the last 40 years, she only answers in Quran, Quranic verses. Why? For the fear that she might utter something that may be held against her in Allah Ta'ala. So she only utters Quran. So we come back to the ayat of, of the Quran that we ended up with today. 
Nabi Sama Qaddamat Lahum Anfusu Man Sakhit Allahu Alayhim Fil Adab Yom Khalidun They will languish in the adab and the punishment forever and forever. That was the, the first, the beginning of their decline. And if we want to see our decline, then we will stop Amr al Ma'roof and Nahi al Munkar, and that will be the beginning of the decline of this Ummah. Our Islamic empires fell precisely because of this reason. When, uh, when Aish and when this luxury, luxurious lifestyle, music and dancing and women and all of these practices came about, and the, 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 the Nahi al Munkar stopped. And it started diminishing and dwindling. That's when Allah Ta'ala removed them after the seat of eight centuries, five centuries, nine, nine, nine centuries of, his, of rulership and power. There was a decline. And there's no, there's no resemblance. There, there's, no, there's no name left also of the Islamic empires. The, the, leader, the rulership in Spain, in Al-Aqsa, in, the, in the, the Ottoman Empire, etc., etc. Because when this, uh, when this dwindled and it died out, then Allah Ta'ala, now it's time for a different, a different rulership and a different regime. Despite you having La ilaha illallah in your, in your heart and in your book of deeds, but you're not doing your primary, object, your primary work that you have been sent for in this dunya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq and save us from the punishment of the adab and of the, of the, the, the grave and the punishment of the fire of Jahannam. May Allah ta'ala emancipate Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak and may Allah ta'ala grant victory to our brothers and sisters in, in Gaza and in Palestine and Syria. وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب